Hello, how's it going? Welcome to another Maraxotes Reviews and How To's video. My name is Brian. Today's video has been in the works for a very long time. About a year and a half ago, my parents' computer was a complete and total piece of crap. It was, I don't even re remember exactly how old it was. it was. I think it was at least 12 years old. Um, I don't remember what kind of hardware it had in it exactly, but the thing was so ridiculously slow, it was literally painful to use. Okay, so not literally painful, but you know what I mean. It was so slow that it was just, I, I mean, I can't, I, I don't have words for it. It was horrible. Anyway, I decided I would build them a brand new computer, uh, so I shot the video way back then, and ever since that time, uh, you know, life has just kind of gotten in the way. Things get crazy and busy, and I finally have gotten around to editing the video. Um, I, I gotta apologize right up front that the camera work is not the best. Uh, since I shot this video, I've done quite a few other videos and learned a lot of things. So yeah, please just bear with me on, uh, the, on the camera work in this video. Now, I'm not claiming to be some computer expert, you know, like guys like uh, Linus Tech Tips and Paul's Hardware, Jay's Two Cents, and the, and the like, but building computers is a hobby of mine, one that I really enjoy, and it's something that I know that there are other people out there like you guys that may be wanting to do this for the first time, and, you know, you don't have any experience whatsoever, and so I'd like to share my little bit of experience with you uh, kind of create a beginner's guide to building your own PC. So I'm sure you've had enough of me sitting here blabbing. Let's go. Okay, so I'd like to get this video started off with doing a quick overview of the components that I used for my parents' build. This here is our Corsair Graphite Series case, which was like a smoking deal at the time. Uh, right here is our Acer 24-inch LED monitor, and then here's our box of all the important stuff. Uh, back when I did this build, I didn't have quite the knowledge that I have now when it comes to power supplies and so I chose this a PV of 520 watt back then because it was super cheap uh, nowadays I don't think I would make that same choice next up we have our G skill rip jaws X 2133 megahertz RAM and then our crucial M500 240 gigabyte solid-state drive for our operating system and other programs and then our operating system, Windows 8.1. Uh, next up is the Western Digital Mechanical Hard Drive. I got the one terabyte capacity for mass storage of different files and whatnot. Then here we have our optical drive. It's an Asus DVD burner. For our processor, I chose the A106800K. Uh, my parents' last computer that they had was I think 12 years old I don't even remember exactly what it was but it was ancient and I figure this thing is way more powerful than what they're gonna need but hopefully it'll last them another 12 years uh, here we have our ASRock motherboard and then some of the other peripherals I got some Logitech speakers to go with it as well as a Logitech keyboard and mouse combo now, when building a computer, all of your components need to go inside of your case. So, right here, I'm undoing a thumb screw and removing the side panel so that we can begin to place our different components inside our computer case. We'll start with the input-output shield, which comes with your motherboard. Now, if you happen to be wondering where the input-output shield goes, there is a cutout on the back of the computer case which is the exact same size as the input output shield. You simply click the shield into the hole and you're good to go. 
Now just give me a second here to pull these cables out of the way and we will continue on with the next part of our build. Next I'd like to take the motherboard and we'll align the I.O. components there on the back of the motherboard with the corresponding holes in the I.O. shield. And then we make sure we also line up the screw holes on the board with the standoffs that are mounted on the motherboard tray, which is the interior part of the case there that the motherboard sits on. Uh, you see here I've got a magnetic tipped screwdriver that I'm using so that the screws will stay on the screwdriver and we will quickly screw all of these in. And now we're moving along to our CPU installation. On the AMD motherboards there's this lever here that you just pull out of the way like so and we will drop our CPU into the socket making sure to align the gold triangle there on the CPU with the triangle that is on the CPU socket itself. Now I must apologize for calling this the CPU because it is technically an APU. I know. Okay, let's keep moving along here. Now we need to install our CPU, or I guess in this case, APU cooler. Now we just had a good look there at our APU cooler with the thermal paste pre-applied to the bottom of it. Now this particular model of a stock cooler for this APU has a pretty simple installation design. You just have the metal parts of the bracket there that hook onto the mounting points there that are attached to the motherboard and once you get them in place you flip the retention lever over here and lock it down. Once you've got that in place it's time to connect your fan header there into the terminal there on the motherboard onto the pins that say CPU fan and you're ready to move on to the next step which is the RAM installation. Now this G-Skill Ripjaws X RAM is some sexy looking RAM. I mean, look at that stuff, man. That's that's straight up nerd porn right there. But uh, let's get on to the installation, shall we? Now you will notice that these memory modules have a little notch between the two different sets of pins, which corresponds with a notch on the motherboard right here. So when you're placing your RAM in, first make sure to move the clips out of the way and unlock the, the clips from the slot there. Then you place the memory module into place and press down firmly until it locks. Now you notice you have four slots and you may not be populating all of them with RAM sticks. So you're going to want to consult your motherboard manual and find out which slots you want to populate if you're going with single channel and which ones you want to populate if you're going with dual channel. Now obviously if you're going to be populating all four slots then it doesn't really matter. Now that we've got our RAM installed let's move along to our power supply which this power supply has some ridiculously brightly sleeved cabling. Even though I had my reservations about it initially, about the quality of it, it's held up for the last year and a half that my parents have been using this computer, so it's been good. Anyway, let's get this power supply slide it, slid into place, and we'll use these uh, thumb screws to secure it. Not all power supplies have thumb screws. Some of them just use regular screws that you screw in with a screwdriver. But once you get it secured here from the back, you are now ready to start distributing power to the different components inside of your case. Now our power supply has all these different wires coming off of it and each one of them will supply power to different components some on the motherboard and some of them will go to our other devices such as hard drives or optical drives and the like. The first one I want to start off with here is our 24 pin connector which is our motherboard power this particular power supply has a 20 plus 4 pin. Other power supplies will have a single 24 pin connector. Now logic would dictate that I would next plug power in for our processor. But I apparently didn't want to do that when I was shooting this video. This little guy here is our HD audio connector, which is your headphone and microphone jack that comes off the front of your case. And it plugs onto this little socket right here. There is only one way that your HD audio header will connect onto the pins, so it's pretty much impossible to connect it incorrectly. Well, I think now we'll just continue moseying right along with our other front panel connectors. And forgive the camera work here. This 
was some stuff I shot a long time ago, and I've since learned some better techniques to do this. But to the upper left there, that is a USB 2.0 header where you will plug things like card readers and, of course, USB 2.0 ports into. And kind of to the bottom right of that, or just below it there, those are your front panel connectors for things like your hard drive LED, your power switch, your power LED so that your light lights up when you turn the power on and just kind of check your motherboard manual on how those need to be connected because every motherboard's a little bit different and once you've got those all hooked up and connected you're ready to keep moving along to some other stuff we are back zoomed out on our motherboard but zooming back in on our next component which is the USB 3.0 header if your case has USB 3.0, you will be using this port. Your plug will look something like this. It has this little notch right there on the cable itself, which corresponds with a notch in the header on the board. So, of course, that is the only way it's going to plug in. And, yeah, easy. Now, from this shot, you might be thinking that I'm going to talk about connecting the 8-pin CPU, or in this case, APU power. But no, I'm not going to talk about that, because the way I shot this video, for some reason, I wanted to <laughs> show how to connect your chassis fans to the different headers on your motherboard. So your motherboard is going to have several sets of pins that look like these in different locations on your motherboard. All you really have to do is take the fan header, which looks like this, plug it onto the pins, and you're good to go. There are other types of fans out there as well that do not necessarily have this style of power connector. They use an older standard, the 4-pin Molex, which you see right here. So, depending on which type of power connector your fan has, you plug it into the corresponding power connector, and then your fan will work and cool your computer as it is designed to do. Okay, so I know I've been skipping over this step for a while now, but here we go. We're going to connect our CPU, or once again, in this case, APU power. You will need to find the corresponding plug off of your power supply. In this case, it is a 8-pin connector. So I'm going to take this cable and plug it into the connector on the motherboard here. Now, I understand that this isn't the most ideal way to connect it, Usually you're going to want to try to route it around or something inside where it looks nice and pretty, where you don't have this cable running across your entire motherboard. But this cable was not long enough for me to do that with, and I didn't have any extensions. And I'm just going to be putting the side panel on it where nobody's ever going to see it. So frankly, I did not care, and I just plugged it in. Besides, all we really need is for the thing to work, right? It doesn't have to look pretty. It's for my parents! Why, hello there, Mr. Computer Case. As you might have guessed, right now we're going to be installing our optical drive. In this case, it's a DVD drive. You may want to do a Blu-ray drive or no drive whatsoever at all. But anyway, you pop out the front panel thingy there and then take your drive and slide it into place like so. With older cases, typically you're going to have to screw your drive into place. Newer ones typically have toolless mounting hardware that allow you to just slide it in and it locks in place kind of like this case does. Now moving around to the inside of the case to the back part of the drive we are going to connect our power. You'll need to find a serial ATA power cable that comes from your power supply which looks something like this and when you're looking directly at the power connector itself you'll see that it has a little bit of an L shaped to it Thanks to that wonderful L shape, once again, it is absolutely impossible to incorrectly connect the power to your device. Once you get your power hooked up, you'll want to route some of those other cables out of the way, and then you're ready to move on to connecting your serial ATA cable itself, which is what carries the data between the drive and the rest of your computer system. Your serial ATA cable looks something like this, and once again, you will see it has that same L shape to it, which allows it to only be connected in one way, again, making it impossible to hook it up incorrectly. 
Now that we have our serial ATA cable plugged into the back of our optical drive, we need to connect it to the rest of our computer system through one of the ports on the motherboard, which on this motherboard are located right here. You simply take the other end of the cable and connect it onto one of the ports on your motherboard, and yeah, that's pretty much it. So now to move on to our next item of business in our computer build, the installation of the solid state drive. Solid state drives in general just have a lot better performance, you get a lot better speed when you're loading programs and all that kind of thing. Anyway, there are lots of different cases out there and all of them have come up with some different ways of mounting your hard drives into your system. This particular Corsair case has some mounting bays for two and a half inch drives like solid state drives but not all cases do. Some cases only have space for your traditional three and a half inch drives so if your case doesn't have mounting points for two and a half inch drives you're going to want to get yourself one of these which is a three and a half inch to two and a half inch drive bay converter. All you gotta do is mount your two and a half inch hard drive into the drive bay converter and then mount it into one of your three and a half inch drive bays in your computer case. So since this case has two and a half inch drive bays built in, I'm just simply going to take my hard drive and slide it into place. And now that I have my solid state drive in place, I'm ready to connect the power and serial ATA cable, which I'm just going to time lapse through here real quick, because connecting the power and serial ATA cable to the solid state drive is exactly the same as it was for connecting the DVD drive. Okay guys, we are almost done with this build. Up next is our one terabyte Western Digital Blue hard drive, which my parents have been using for the last year and a half as their mass storage drive. And in this particular case, it was really easy to install. The toolless mounting hardware made it, all I had to do is just slide it into place and it was there. Once again, we hook up the power and serial ATA cable just like we have done with our other peripherals. And now our build is pretty much complete. All that's really left is to hook up our mouse and keyboard and our monitor, install our operating system, and get this thing going. Okay guys, now it's time for the moment of truth to see if everything works and the computer posts. Apparently this ASRock motherboard's default setting does not show a post screen, so I just started hitting F2 so that I could get into the system BIOS. And for those of you that have never built a computer before or have never messed around in your system BIOS before, your system BIOS is where you set up a lot of the different options and features of your computer. For example, you can set up a boot device list, which tells your computer which device it wants to try to boot from first. A lot of motherboards nowadays also will allow you to overclock your CPU and stuff from inside of your system BIOS or set up fan profiles and things like that. But I have to admit that I am definitely not the most qualified person to teach you about your system BIOS and the different features that they have and the things that you can do with them and how to do it. So I recommend if that's something that you want to do, to go out there, search for exactly what it is you want to do. And I'm sure that somebody that's smarter than I am has made a video of it that will help walk you through the process. All right, there we have it. Thanks guys for watching the video. I hope you liked it. If you did, there's this thing you can do. If you, you know, there's this one too, if you didn't. If you did like it, get subscribed to my channel. I've got more videos in the works all the time and I would love to share them with you guys. If you have any comments that you'd like to make or questions you have for me, post them in the comments section below. I always try my very best to stay on top of your guys' comments and to answer the questions you might have. Anyway, I hope you guys have a great day. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.